I don't want you to go home. I don't want to go either. Just, I just had a little cry. My makeup's all smudgy. I'm in a huff. If you can wait till I get home, I get home. then I swear to you that we can make this last. Our dear friend Hannah Witten um, made a video about long distance date ideas. Yeah. And I'm going to link that down below, but it sparked the idea for this. I did a QA and a on Instagram about long distance. So as you know, we're married now, we're living together, but wasn't always easy. You know, we were only dating a month before I moved to Spain to do my pilot training. Both of us couldn't hack it. It's very, very difficult. And we yeah. know that a lot of you are in this situation right now where you're being forced to have a long distance relationship even if you maybe live in the same town or you live a few towns apart. So we kind of wanted to give a lot of our tips and yeah. advice. We feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, we do. Because we remember how terrible it was. A lot of you said to me in these uh, questions that you sent me, about how you don't know when it's going to end whereas at least like we did always have a date a date to meet up yeah. the longest time we were apart was two months we, we did do a lot of gaps of a month here and there and then there's like two weeks here and there they, the gaps got smaller as the time went on because yeah. we were just we just got sick it. of it like got <laughs> really sick of it how did we stay in contact um and i think we had various forms of contact so we had uh texts yeah Skype, like FaceTime calls, and um, we'd send one another videos. Yeah. We sent each other letters. Like, yeah. diversify the contact because it can get very stale if you're just texting. Yeah. Um, especially if you're not much of a texter. Like, you would send me texts that were quite, you know, full of emojis and kisses and stuff, but you wouldn't elaborate much in texts. So I found voice calls much easier. Yeah. You. Yeah, like I'm not a massive, I'm not a massive texter myself anyway. So yeah, like I would kind of text because it, you know, it fills out those gaps throughout the day. Text is like your foundation. Yeah. And then your next level up, your first floor is like <laughs> little videos and voice messages. Oh the day yeah, and like pictures. Like, yeah, like one thing I used to do quite a lot, do you remember, I used to send you like little 10 second videos in the morning I when I them. was getting ready and stuff. Yeah. Just before I went out the door, I'd just send a little bit, like little videos throughout the day, you know, they're quicker than a text yeah. for one thing. They're quicker to do and they're just more personal as well. It's just nice to see the person, hear the voice and that yeah. type of thing. It People communicate differently and I obviously am a writer, I love writing and I would write these big essays and stuff and you would always communicate better through video. Yeah, in terms of staying in contact, like I know someone else definitely asked about should you schedule in time to talk or should you just talk all day long and I think it depends on the couple but yeah. we scheduled time because I, I hate when someone just rings me and I'm caught off guard yeah. and especially when you're long distance like you want to be looking all nice like a video <laughs> calls like I feel like a crusty potato I hate getting <laughs> random calls that I'm not expecting and um, so we would kind of schedule them for the evening when you weren't studying yeah not like, even every day either yeah it's like just... depending on whether or not you're working from home it probably depends at the moment like it a lot of people might be fine with just getting a call anytime because there's yeah. nothing else to do. Yeah. But like we were kind of working a lot during the day, the two of us, I was studying, Melanie was working. So mm. we'd, I don't, I'd even, no matter how busy I was though, I'd always make sure to at least send a little voice message or text in the morning and one at night. So keeping oh, yeah, that continuous yeah. you com have to have conversation. That. Someone did say that they're getting very frustrated because their boyfriend is saying that they will call and then they don't call or they're not sending the good morning texts or the and, and stuff and that is really stressful i think when you're in a long distance because yeah. trying to establish trust and all that long distance is really difficult when someone does what they say they're going to do that's the building blocks of trust it's about setting expectations as well like me and manly talk quite a lot like and we're fine with that we're both very extroverted but if you're like a really introverted person and you're loving this yeah. and you're just like oh my god i get to just lock myself away and read and play games and just do all the stuff that i never have time to do 
like maybe you want to just say look I'm really enjoying this and we can have a call every second day and I'll text you like in the evening and yeah. and but I don't want to be continuously talking yeah like, just, you just have to agree on yeah it. I, just set out set out what Next you want to do, 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 do just say we're gonna do and then just do it <laughs> okay this is good would you have done long distance with Thomas if you hadn't already known him well as a person now I didn't know you really well we were friends for a very long time yeah. but we weren't bezzy mates and we established yeah. this in the first video that we ever did together we weren't the kind of friends who'd go to the cinema together and stuff we were like night out friends so we'd see yeah. one another like for for periods of time it'd be once a month on a night out and then yeah. a two years would go by but we'd text a lot on facebook you know the way you have tiers of friends or you have like your very very close friends i was never like really really close friends with anyone that i fancied like if i found someone attractive i would not be close friends with them um especially because like i was in a relationship when we were yeah. friends and like there was always that kind of chemistry there um but we'd see each other a lot on nights out and stuff um we knew each other quite a long time before i went off to spain and i was going for a year and a half and i was so busy I kind of knew when I went over there, the chance of me coming back for visits was pretty slim. Enough. When Thomas moved, we still weren't official. Like we were still yeah. dating. So our first couple of months apart, we were still in the dating phase. And it'd be kind of like if you'd just gone on a few Tinder dates with someone and right now you're like separate because of the quarantine, that's the phase we were in. Yeah. But like... We still had a foundation though, I yeah. feel like. There was like a lot we, we didn't know about each other though. There's a lot we didn't know each about each other, but I think we both at least knew we were both like nice people yeah. and we were both like, we had been like attracted to each other for a long time. And, and we had similar goals. Similar goals, that type of thing. So there, we already Maybe we wouldn't that. have, maybe we wouldn't have actually gotten together if we just met. Yeah, it's hard to know because like, yeah, because we had like, we already had that foundation even though we didn't really know that much about each other, we kind of had a vibe of what the other person was like yeah. going into it when we started dating. But but at the start, I thought it was going to be casual. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people ask us how to deal with being attracted to other people. If you're doing social distancing, you're not really going to be meeting people that yeah. you're going to be attracted <laughs> to. You right? just like scroll through Instagram and say, Oh, wow. oh, yeah. oh my god um, <laughs> or just seeing someone from afar when you're out for a walk well a so. lot of people are still working though. in our situation though we were still like going on nights out and stuff se separate yeah um so i suppose it depends what you mean by attracted like physically attracted and just seeing like hot people you know that that's gonna happen forever to both yeah. of us <laughs> that's never gonna <laughs> not happen um but i suppose when you're when you're in a long distance relationship so there's certain needs that can't really be met and stuff and then you are around and in the presence of people who you're attracted we to talked about it yeah i suppose it's just talking just uh, i hope it won't be the best way to word it um if it's you're around attractive people a passing comment to the other person can be I think enough but if you're like crushing on someone like if you're yeah. around someone and you're developing a crush on someone else then it's just social about, distance <laughs> it is social distance the only difference with long distance relationships is you're gonna have to just be probably a little bit more detailed like I think yeah. that's something that we kind of grew into while I was in Spain oh, it's yeah, just talking I... more more is like you can never have too, too much, much detail talk too much because at the end of the day, the other person is... Is filling it in in their head if yeah. you're not telling them. You we, have to tell we, them everything. Yeah, like we Just, dealt with that because I, I was quite like jealous. A lot of people sent in questions about dealing with jealousy from long distance. I was quite... Um, I wouldn't even say jealous. It's more like I was insecure because of previous relationships mm. where I was hurt or betrayed or whatever and that has a lasting effect on your psychology and you have to find someone who's very patient very kind uh, to work with you on those issues because they can manifest in really yeah. weird ways and like I would pick fights over really over nothing like there was this girl who like I found very because being by 
bisexual doesn't help with you. <laughs> <laughs> I could like if I was like oh I think that person's attractive so he must think they're attractive as well and I remember like you'd be messaging me like oh me and so and so just went to the gym together and stuff and I'd be sitting there like Ugh! like but you know <laughs> it, it at the end of the day that fear and those feelings were coming from my insecurity yeah. not not actual like you doing anything causing yeah. that you know so yeah it's just like a lot of uncomfortable conversations yeah. have to be had and it's kind of hard to have them long distance so i think video calls yeah over texts texting about this stuff do not do it you lose so much tone and so much um you know the way we would misconstrue each other over text yeah. sometimes text can be dangerous but i think we're a good representation of two different types of people going into this because i was never really a jealous person at all but at, especially at the start i would i'd have the odd moment where i'd just be like well, what's she doing tonight and i haven't had a text in a few hours like why why isn't she text? usually she texts me at this time why isn't she texting me at this time and but i would just take a deep breath and be like calm the fuck down right that she's not doing anything <laughs> mental she's probably just watching a movie with her dad yeah. and then I just move on yeah usually and it would just be me and dad watching Star Trek or something yeah and I just so I just like deep breath deal with it myself and move on and I'd be honest with myself if I if I was harboring feelings of like jealousy or that type of thing but sometimes you, were, you would like you'd say you know I remember one time like someone added me on Facebook and it came up in your feed and you sent me like a screenshot and you were like uh, you made a joke about it and stuff like yeah. that and it was obviously like your way of asking me like oh is this someone you were out talking to yeah. last night or and then yeah it's just having having just, the talk about I it I was just keeping it light hard but yeah. at the same time I was like <laughs> a million miles away <laughs> how did you keep the sexual chemistry well apart Um, how to remain actually intimate see a lot of people message yeah. me though who don't know how to go about any of this and they're very like they're not into it or they're they're very nervous about it or embarrassed about it yeah i think the best thing to do is to just remember look it's a, it's supposed to be fun yeah. like if you're going to try and force it it's not going to be fun and it and it will be awkward and, yeah. and you'll make it awkward like you have to be able to laugh laugh about it while also enjoying, enjoying it i think yeah. and then eventually the laughter will go away and you'll just be enjoying it <laughs> but like what we were saying about sending each other letters and that type of thing like that was We'd really send cool. each other objects you other thing, get things would be the letter would be there as a ha ha this is what i did today and i miss you <laughs> And just, oh, this is so funny, I'm sending a letter. And then maybe something else will be included with the letter that would be along those lines. I'm yeah. not gonna, you, you decide for yeah, yourself. Yeah, you use your imagination. Like, a couple of little things I'll throw out there. You can create a... A porn account together and have a shared login. A porn account together and share the login. Oh, okay. Yeah. We would, <laughs> yeah, make very nice videos for each other high production value yeah send them to each that's other. that's one really good like the fact that you have a lot of free time right now you could be making very long uh videos for your partner with a whole backstory <laughs> like <laughs> you could make a whole movie yeah. with credits and everything yeah and there's there's you know in terms of it's, like it's great crack in terms of you know phone sex and all that kind of stuff um you can there's all kinds of angles, you know, you can play around with, like, some people aren't into the dirty talk stuff. Like, some people just aren't into it, but you don't have to even do that. You just look at each other, even. It depends on what you're yeah, into. Yeah, it depends what you're into. Um, I would definitely say, with that type of thing, like, you don't really need to, it doesn't need to be, like, a 90s teen movie where you're, like, come on, let's have fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's just do it, you know? <laughs> Just kind of start leading into that type of a thing, and yeah. the other person Ever, will just pick happen up. by accident. Yeah, just let um, it happen by accident. Yeah. You're just having fun. Hey, what's that? Uh. You know, and, <laughs> and then all of a sudden the other person's enjoying. It. You're like, oh, good. They're, we're both enjoying this. But if the other person's kind of like, what are you doing? Then yeah. don't be offended. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Do not be offended because a lot of people aren't into it. Just say, yeah, a lot of people get embarrassed about it. it. And I, I think one really important thing to remember as well is that the very nature of long distance relationships means that all your needs aren't going to be met and you kind of need to learn to rely a bit more on yourself for those needs. <laughs> you know what I mean by this. I've which made is many where, the video about it. Which is where the shared account comes in. Yeah. Play, because <laughs> then you at least know what the other person's doing. 
and what they're into. Which and it's and it's not like a creepy oh I got you now yeah. by the way. It's just like you're both you're like oh I watched that video you were watching the other day. Very nice. Yeah, you, know? you can watch it at the ha, same ha, ha. time, same time, and then update each yeah. other. Yeah, just keep it anyway. fun. Just have fun. <laughs> How to cope when both of your love languages is physical touch, and that is our main love language. Oh, yeah, both I, of yeah. us. It's just really difficult i loved you sent me a shirt with your your fragrance on it one time yeah that was so nice and um uh we just did a whole lot of talking about when we would meet up that was like a big thing there was this constant countdown and build up to when we would actually get to see and hold each other and we'd make plans about it yeah Um, it's about looking forward to i know we don't have a cut off date but you don't need one just make it start making a list just be like yeah. quarantine is over list to 2020 and then these are all just be like do. adding stuff to it as you're there talking yeah. stuff like that and making but plans. we would like we would sometimes you know if we'd have the same dinner or we'd watch the same film at the same time and just kind of trying to pretend we were there together like. yeah we used to do that like we watched loads of stranger things by just being like like manly get it up on her netflix i get it up on mine and then we'd be like, all right, one, two, two three, three, play. Yeah. And then we just kind of text each other while we were watching the show. Yeah, and sometimes like we'd be falling asleep and we'd just leave the phone on just with each other just talking yeah. while we were drifting off. And like, it's it's really, really difficult, but you have to get creative and you have to try different things to find what will work for you. Um, but again, long distance just doesn't work for some people. Some people yeah. cannot hack it. And to be fair we are an example of that like we got to a certain point where it was just really excruciating and um, every time we were separating and yeah. like the idea of going another few weeks became harder and harder the closer we got so if you're in a long-term relationship and suddenly you're long distance um you know some people might end up having very difficult conversations during this about like their relationship and putting it on hold and things like that because it's this is a very strange situation to find yourself yeah. in this has never happened before and um, so we're all just trying to navigate it but if you really love the person you'll work through yeah. through not having everything that you want right now yeah um I feel, yeah i feel like this is it's a good test for relationships i found that our time apart in spain and also our time together like we were always either ha- we're miles away from each other or we're in the same room yeah. and as a result it forced us to really establish um how compatible we were in a very short space of time yeah. and luckily we went the good way and we got even closer because of it yeah. um and in certain relationships that might not be the case and in a way it might yeah. be a blessing yeah. you'll get about six months of <laughs> learning about the other person done in about six days yeah. um, <laughs> just by talking constantly I was actually really surprised by how much this came up it came up a lot um, is it normal to lose the love feeling um, or is it normal to question if you're still in love while you're in a long distance relationship um, and it's very hard to answer this because all we can do is base it on our own situation. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like, I think, I suppose I've heard that in very long-term relationships that are really, really happy, you'll go through kind of peaks and troughs. Like you'll go through periods where you're not feeling as super duper loving um, or you're not as like, you don't have that in love feeling as much and stuff. But again, like I don't, I haven't felt that with you. When... Melanie was in Spain it was just great everything was great and then she'd leave and then I'd be sad and then I'd kind of after a few days go numb and just kind of numb myself and send as many texts and video messages and stuff as I could to kind of fill the gap Mm. and then she'd be back and everything would be great again I suppose you know like it probably depends on what people are defining love as because for if, if you're someone, for example, who's only ever been in relationships that are like a year long or two years long or six months long, I don't know the age group of these people send these questions, but that kind of like initial honeymoon period that they call it at the beginning, which usually lasts, what, six months to a year? Six, I think yeah. ours ended when I moved in, in Spain, but I yeah. think we became closer then. But yeah. the actual honeymoon feeling ended where like you don't have butterflies every time they walk through the door, you know, yeah. or like, cause you're around each other all the time. So you get used to one another. But I think if you're defining love as that kind of, oh 
Oh my god. Infatuation. So Infatuation, yeah. That's why they always advise you to not jump in too quickly in the first few months in a relationship because you really, really do not know everything about the person, everything about how they're going to be in a relationship yeah. and their, their whole life, their family, everything like that. Um, and obviously it's normal for that to go away, but it should be replaced, I feel like, with a deeper connection not with a feeling of, oh, I don't think I love this person anymore. Yeah. You know, like that's just my personal feeling though. Yeah. You know? Like I feel like going by that question, this person is saying, it was a I, lot of people. It was like 20 people. All oh, like right. That. These people are saying I'm in quarantine. I haven't seen the other person in a few weeks and now I don't really no, miss them, them anymore. <laughs> Cause I don't, I don't feel like I love them. The, I could kind of take it or leave it if they were here right now. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's not. I agree. I just, I don't know. I feel like that sounds more like friendship love or, you know, because mm. you're very, you can very easily go without your friend and you're not going to be pining after your friend, missing your friend. Yeah. Um, same with like a family member, like a sibling or a parent. Like, you know, it's it's a bit different in a romantic relationship. Like, romantic love to me is very different. You might be enjoying having this time to yourself. Yeah, that's but the, different. But the feeling of love shouldn't go away. Mm. If the feeling of love is going away, whether you're introverted or not, it's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. that's not, it's not even a bad sign. It's just a sign that that might not be the right match. What, do we have a piece? You had a bit of lipstick on your tooth, but it's gone. I have lipstick on my tooth. Oh, I don't know how long it's. Oh, it's back again. How is it back again? Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's another one. Is it big? And I always try and say this to like friends and anyone I know who's kind of going through a rocky patch in a relationship or a breakup or anything like that. I don't know why everyone views them always as a bad thing. In fact, it's opening you up to the right situation. You're freeing up time that you may have spent with someone where it wasn't going anywhere, you know, yeah. so you can just see it in a more positive way. Um, but I definitely think this quarantine is going to shine a light on areas in relationships that might be a bit weaker. Because um, sometimes one person's trying way more than the other and they're not on the same page. Mm. And in that situation, it would be very easy to lose a feeling of love for yeah. someone. But with situ like if it is shining a light on problems that you're having, it doesn't mean the relationship's over. Yeah. It just means that you are realizing way quicker than you would have that this part of the relationship is bothering you and now is the perfect time to mm -hmm. sort it out, you know? Yeah, long distance puts a microscope on your relationship, yeah. doesn't it? Right, do we believe in the saying out of sight, out of mind when it comes to a relationship? As in when you're not here, I'm not thinking about you. Yeah. No. <laughs> what? Oh. You don't know us, do you? <laughs> I'm more the opposite, like when we're not together, I think about you a lot, like probably more than if you're here. Yeah, like sometimes when, when Mel isn't here, like she even if she's just like gone off for a walk or something like that, um, like I'll have certain thoughts or something like that and it's almost like I nearly turn to tell you and then yeah. you're not there, it's like... Yeah, it's just when you have a life companion, it's you get so used to them. Sometimes, like, we'll go to sleep. <laughs> One of us is asleep. We'll be like, I missed you when you were asleep. <laughs> I said, like, you left me lonely. You fell asleep first. <laughs> we're, we're, the, we're the other extreme. Yeah. yeah. Do you find your relationship changed in any way when you finished long distance? It was just a lot, like, easier. And yeah. we don't take each other for granted. No. Ever. And I think that's a really great thing that long distance did for us. Yeah, like, we've been home about a year and a half now and I still every day I'm grateful that yeah. Melanie's here because because yeah like I've experienced what it's like to not see her for months at a time and it's just awful. Oh, how to get through long distance mentally and how to keep your mind on other things. This is such a massive thing um, and I know like a lot of people don't touch on this but like we are the type of people to keep ourselves busy all yeah. the time and when we were apart our days were so full that if they weren't I think we would have crumbled don't give up your life for another person essentially like you fit them in you don't like you don't put them before everything else yeah you know yeah like so we talked about like how to communicate with the texts and the video calls and all that you have to remember that between all that time 
you should be filling your day. Even don't. now, even now during quarantine, tell them how much stuff you're doing during the day. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm renovating the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to, if if you become one of those people that will literally just sit staring Stare at your at phone, phone, waiting, for, waiting text. for your partner to text you back. And worse still, they're the type of person that between texts is actually outliving their lives and yeah. being productive with how they can. Like, you're just going to hate yourself. You're just going to be just lethargic oh. and sad but you'll also dull. like think your relationship is really bad when it's not you like, you'll think worse of your partner and of your relationship when they are not at fault at all yeah. like all day now like when i'm during the week like i'll be working on video stuff and like upcoming brand stuff i'm writing my second novel i'm like yeah. filling the day and then we both fit in a bit of time to do exercise and then the evening times is our time together so we'll in the evening times like watch shows and yeah, all like, that kind of stuff I feel like if Melanie was stuck in a house say down in Kerry or something like that and I was here I'd be doing all the exact same yeah. stuff except the things that I just say to her I'd be saying in a video message or a text or something like that yeah. you have to fill your day pick up that musical instrument that you haven't looked at in six months uh, maybe paint the house you're so good on your guitar read. now baby <laughs> deal with spiraling thoughts about whether or not the other person still likes or loves you i had a lot of that didn't i yeah <laughs> i didn't deal with it very well i'm not the person to ask for advice on this <laughs> um if thomas wasn't so reassuring and well i asked i told you how much reassurance i need which you yeah. didn't immediately know um yeah. but i have dealt with that several times throughout my life just kind of questioning and like um I do think it took until we were reunited and like actually living together in person for me to really believe that you loved me the same as I loved you just because I always feel like I'm not deserving I, I felt like I didn't deserve you for a long time because I just have had such bad experiences do you know um but you're really really good at kind of proving yourself you know and i don't know like it's just it comes back to what we've already said communication you need to tell the other person yeah. that you're having these thoughts and you need to tell them that you're going to need extra reassurance during this time and you also need to tell them to take it seriously yeah. Um, and they need to be willing to do all of those things otherwise they're probably not a very good fit for you uh, the last question is would you do long distance again if we really had to I think I know. obviously we're married but I wouldn't yeah. want to I wouldn't would, I wouldn't be happy to do it again but I'd do it again yeah no I think we could do it again we would just yeah. make a point of not being long distance as best we could but if we were forced to like well, yeah, we just do what? What's the, what's the, what's the other alternative? I'm not taking this off. I hope that video was a little bit comforting during these very difficult times, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely let us know down below if you're in a long distance situation right now because of the situation. Like if you're not isolating with your partner, let us know if you liked this video with a little thumbs up because they helps the channel out a lot. And we'll see you again in another video very soon. Goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, good friends, goodbye. Enjoy the, the quarantine. quarantine. Maybe learn guitar or read a book. book.